What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I've got, as you can tell, a pretty large unboxing. But the most exciting part about today's video isn't the unboxing at all. I've actually teamed up with Richie Lee for a giveaway, so make sure to stay tuned. This unboxing is going to be a little bit different than most of my other unboxings because I only have two pairs of sneakers and I've got some other stuff. No idea what this could be, just no clue at all. So what I'm gonna do is actually save the sneakers for last and then get all the smaller stuff out of the way first. But now, on to the giveaway. I've partnered up with one of my favorite YouTubers, Richie Lee. If you haven't seen his stuff, you definitely have to check him out to give away a pair of KD12s in your size. He's also giving away a separate pair of sneakers to a separate winner in his video, a pair of Kobe Pro Tros, which is awesome. So I'll make sure to leave a link to that at the top of the screen. Entering the giveaway is really simple. All you have to do is subscribe to my channel, subscribe to Richie Lee's channel, follow us both on Instagram, and then comment where you're from in the comment section down below. And all the links you'll need to do this are in the description below, so make sure to check it out and make sure to enter before June 24th because that's when the giveaway ends. I'm really excited about this giveaway and the fact that I got to team up with Richie Lee for this. Like I said, he's one of my favorite YouTube YouTubers, and I'm also really excited about giving someone a new pair of kicks because that's always a lot of fun. But now that you know all the giveaway information, let's start breaking into some of these packages. And the first one I've got is actually from a fellow YouTuber, a good friend of mine named Kais Omar, who most of you guys probably already know. So this package he actually told me was coming, and this is something that he's pretty excited about and I'm really excited to check out. So this is actually his collab with Stance. So Stance is an awesome sock company who makes some of the best basketball socks around and some of the best lifestyle socks around. And Actually, that packaging looks awesome. And he did a collab with them, and I believe it's in every Foot Locker and like every Champs or something crazy like that. So huge congrats to Kais for that because that's a mind-blowing achievement. But let's check these guys out. Ooh, look at that. It comes in almost like a VHS tape holder, which is kind of cool. I don't think the standard socks will come in that. It could just be for the press kit, but let's see them. So here they are, the Dream Crew socks. Very, very clean. You've got a white sock with a nice little red stance logo, and then also Dream Crew written down the side in black with red on either side. That's a really nice sock. I, I really like these a lot, actually. Let me give you guys sort of an idea of how these would look on feet <laughs> with my hand. So here you go. <clears throat> Pretend that didn't happen. These are awesome. Thank you so much, Kais, for sending these over. Thank you, Stance. And also, make sure to check out these socks in Foot Lockers and Champs, places like that. And I believe they also come in like two other colors as well. So make sure to be on the lookout for these. These are dope. Okay, so next up, we've got the Spark Drone. And this is something that I'm very excited about. One, because I've started to really like drones. So this is something that I've wanted for a while. And two, because uh, my original drone that I had, my GoPro Karma, kind of went MIA on me. I don't think it was my fault. I think it was a GPS problem, but regardless, GoPro is not helping me out in any way, shape, or form. I've had phone calls with them. I've had online chats with them for hours. I've sent them flight logs, everything. Um, and they still say it's my fault, even though basically what happened was I took the drone up about 15 seconds after it launched. It lost GPS signal, it lost controller signal, and then darted in a different direction never to be seen again. So that was really frustrating and also the fact that I went on Reddit and saw that it was like a pretty common problem for that to happen or at least it was a common problem before they recalled it. So I just said screw it, I'm gonna grab a smaller, less expensive drone that I can use for my recon mission. Uh, so I grabbed the Spark drone. So this is the DJI Spark. It is their smallest consumer drone. I believe it came out in 2017. And uh, my neighbor has it, and some of my friends have it, and they all recommend it. So it's something that I'm really excited about, and something that I feel like would be great for a recon mission. Maybe not like the best video quality in the world, so maybe not used for videos, but just a fun drone to fly around because this guy's small, light, and easy to fly. And also, um, a great way to search for my older drone. And it kind of sucks even more because that previous drone was a Christmas gift from my fiance. So that was like even more special because of that, and now it's just gone forever. GoPro did actually offer me a new battery and some new propellers, but I don't have a drone anymore. What am I supposed to do with that? So this is the drone and controller kit. You can actually find it on Amazon. I grabbed it from Best Buy. If you guys want to check it out, I'll leave an affiliate link in the description below so you guys can check that out. I believe it was $3.99 before tax, so not terrible, but not, you know, incredibly cheap. So let's pop this guy open, see what we've got. Okay, so first thing out of the box is the Spark instructions. We've got the controller combo, quick start guide, remote control. I'm never gonna read those. Maybe that's why I lost my drone the first time. I don't know. Okay, so next up we've got actually what looks like the drone, but I'll save this guy for a little bit later. What else we have inside the box first? Oh, <laughs> well there's the controller. Okay, so in here you've got power cables, 
things like that. Very nice. So here is the controller. This is the accessory that you can buy separately for I think 150 or get in the kit for the same price as the drone on its own because I think it's on sale. And it's definitely worth grabbing. If you're grabbing the drone, I wouldn't fly this with just a phone. I've tried it and it's not great. What you do is you actually pop this bottom part open here and you slide your phone in the bottom. So here's the phone in the controller. You can use the phone as sort of a heads up display, um, a way to check your battery life, to check you know the camera feed of the drone, things like that. And it really helps to actually have these these joysticks or analog sticks as well, because trying to do that, you know, with a virtual controller on the phone is is almost impossible. For something that holds a giant phone in the bottom, it fits in your hand really, really well. I really love the way this feels. This doesn't feel like an Xbox controller or anything like that, but it does feel comfortable a lot more so than I thought because you've got some nice finger rests right there and these grips on the side actually do allow your palms to kind of curl around the phone, which is nice. So, And then of course, we've got to get to the drone itself, the DJI Spark. So here's the big reveal. Ooh, it is smaller than I remember. Wow, this guy's tiny. Look at that. The DJI Spark, a slightly older drone from 2017, but one that's extremely popular. It also flies really, really fast and really well and has a battery life of about 15 minutes, I believe. It's a great drone to use to try and find my other drone. Um, really excited about checking this guy out. I also really like this little carrying case too, which actually seems bigger than the Mavic Air's carrying case because I think the Mavic Air gets smaller because the arms fold in, but Still something great I could throw in a suitcase or something like that. I'm not sure exactly what the, the regulations for flying with the drone on an airplane is, but we'll, we'll figure it out. So the DJI Spark is a surprisingly light, very, very small drone with a, a gimbal on the front and a, I believe a 1080p camera, so it's not the highest resolution, but it's not bad, especially if you're just using it for pictures and things like that. And I believe this drone is actually advertised as the selfie drone because you can do hand controls with it. You can set it up to hover right where you want your selfie to be so you can put your hand up and it takes a picture or something crazy like that. It's a very cool drone and it's very maneuverable too. I'm super, super excited about this. And DJI, if you guys ever want to work with the sneaker YouTuber, hit me up. <laughs> This package is actually something that is pretty exciting for me because I consider myself a soda connoisseur. I drink way too much soda and I love just soda and carbonation and anything sweet. Coca-Cola actually released a limited edition collector's pack to coincide with the Stranger Things season three release. And I'm really excited to check this stuff out. One, because I really dig Stranger Things and two, because Coca-Cola is awesome. Let's see what we've got inside. Great packaging, actually. Good job, Coke. This will keep that stuff secure in there. And I thought there'd be more soda in here. <laughs> so inside this collector's case, you've got two bottles and two cans. I thought there would be two of each bottle and two cans, but no. <laughs> two cans and two bottles total. So what we've got here is regular Coke in a special edition glass Stranger Things bottle. We've got Coca-Cola Zero Sugar in the same sort of glass special edition Stranger Things bottle. And then here is the real thing that I was excited about, New Coke from the 80s. I was born in 1992, I'm 27, I never actually got a chance to try New Coke, but as a Coke fan, I always really wanted to try it because apparently when New Coke came out, just all hell broke loose and Coke fans were distraught and really pissed off. This is my first chance ever to try new Coke. So the whole thing with new Coke is that they actually changed the sweetener inside Coca-Cola from what we're used to, which is what we have now, to this new version called new Coke. And uh, people just really didn't like the way it tasted or maybe they just didn't like the fact that it was different from the Coke that we're used to. So after a couple months to a year, they actually stopped producing it and switched back to their regular formula, which is what we have today. So I've never had a chance to taste this new Coke. There isn't any nutritional information on the, the can itself. It says, please call for nutrition and consumer information. So there could be anything in here. That's kind of scary. So to prepare for this, because I am a soda nerd, I drank a full glass of water to cleanse my palate. And now I'm gonna use the same glass, which is probably not the right way to go, to actually pour the Coke into and check out the color. This sounds so stupid. Smells like Coke. It's kind of like a sweeter Coke, like Coke with, um, I don't know, cane sugar, something like that. It reminds me of kosher Coke, if you guys have ever tried that. But it's not bad, I like it. It really does have a very, very sweet taste compared to Coke. I'm gonna be honest, my expectations of like the crazy was a lot higher, um, but it's not bad. So the first pair of shoes we got is obviously from Nike, as you can tell by 
the ridiculous Nike swoosh on the side of the box. But I am pretty interested in checking out this pair of sneakers because it is kind of a, a new tech, or not really a new tech, but some new tech used on a popular silhouette. So let's pop this guy open. Okay, interesting. An all black box. Hmm. I've never actually seen a Jordan 4 come in this kind of box before, but cool all the same. This pair of sneakers costs $220 retail. It comes in the Hyper Royal Black and Hyper Royal colorway, and it is a pair of Air Jordan 4s. So let's see what pair of Air Jordan 4s it is. Kind of exactly what I expected. I do this for you guys. I buy these shoes for you guys. Oh man, so this is the Flyknit Air Jordan 4 in the Hyper Royal Blue colorway. It is exactly what it sounds like. It's a Flyknit pair of Air Jordan 4s. And just like with the Flyknit 3s, I think it's fine. I actually did like the Flyknit Air Jordan 1s. I thought that was a pretty nice pair of sneakers. And I also like the fact that the first pair to come out was the bread colorway, and that dropped right after the original bread colorway dropped. And I'm really surprised that they didn't do the same thing with the Flyknit Jordan 4s. You would think because they just dropped the retro of the bread 4s, they would drop a Flyknit bread 4, which I think would have been a great colorway, and I think might have actually saved this sneaker. But instead, they dropped it in four very bright, solid monochromatic colorways, which I, I honestly think was the wrong move. I feel like, yeah, they're fine for summer, but for 220 bucks, it's a lot of money to spend on a pair of shoes that's super bright and is pretty hard to wear. This is the kind of shoe that I would probably, honestly, only pick up if it went to, uh, to like an outlet or something like that, because I just don't see myself rocking this. I think the technology behind the shoe is cool. I really do like the Flyknit. I actually really like the way it's implemented on this sneaker. I think they did a pretty nice job from what I can see right now. That's kind of an interesting touch. It's got established 1989 embossed on the back of the heel tab, which is not something I think they've ever done before, so that's pretty cool to see. I like that detail a lot, actually. Honestly, colorway-wise, I'm not into it. Blue was probably the best color out of the four that dropped, I think the most wearable, but still, even then, it's just an all-blue sneaker, and it's not, not my thing. I guess maybe I could wear it to a Sixers game because <laughs> I'm a Sixers fan and the Sixers wear blue. So maybe there's that, but um, visually, I can't get behind it. I wish they had done a bread colorway. That would have changed everything. Like, no, it might not be the most sought after Air Jordan 4 ever, but I feel like a bread colorway would have really given this shoe a fighting chance. Because honestly, like the Flyknit Air Jordan 3s that dropped last year, which only had one colorway, I think this is probably gonna be the same way, where they drop this set of colorways and then that's it. That being said, I don't hate the fact that it's a Flyknit Air Jordan 4. I think Flyknit is a really great technology. I think the way that it's implemented on this shoe could have been better. Like, I don't love these ribs around the ankle area, but I do actually like the look of the Flyknit on the toe. I think the way that the tongue was done is pretty nice. I think the fact that it's thin and still has some padding is a pretty nice touch. You've also got a stitched on jump man right there on the center of it, and then you've got blue laces to match. I actually also don't mind the leather sock liner either. I'm, I'm actually kind of a fan of leather sock liners as long as you're wearing socks because they can get a little bit hot. I do think it's a weird touch on a Flyknit shoe, and I know that the other Flyknit Jordans had that as well. Um, Flyknit is, you know, traditionally a lighter, more breathable material, and then putting leather right up against your foot is gonna make you sweat around that area, so it is kind of a weird touch. I actually am kind of surprised that they were able to maintain the shape of the Air Jordan 4, especially in Flyknit, because when you use a softer knit material, it doesn't usually hold the same form that, you know, a traditional leather sneaker would hold. And the fact that this looks like a pair of Air Jordan 4s and not some floppy, you know, boot type thing is, is pretty impressive. I actually am kind of into the all blue outsoles. I think that's pretty cool. You've got the different tones in the outsole and the black Jumpman in the center. When you buy a pair of shoes, the outsole probably shouldn't be your favorite part. It should be the part that you can see. But the Flyknit Air Jordan 4 isn't bad. It's not my favorite shoe in the world. Maybe if you're trying to grab it, wait for its hit outlets because I definitely think that it will. You might not be able to grab the exact color that you want or the exact size that you want, but I definitely think some sizes will be hitting outlets. I, I wouldn't spend my money on it. I would wait on it, definitely. But on to the next pair. So the final package that we got in is actually from Supreme. So you probably already know what this pair of sneakers is. This is a pair of shoes that I'm not sure exactly how to feel about until I see them in person. I really don't wanna say anything negative about them and then open them and really like them, or say anything great about them and then open them and think just, wow, these are trash. So let's, uh, let's hold judgment until we see them. Of course, because I bought it from Supreme, it comes in a Supreme bag. I don't know why I expected anything less. I think these also drop on the sneakers app in like a day or two. Maybe not this colorway, but I know the collab does. There we go. Did I get any stickers? 
couple Supreme stickers as you would expect from a Supreme drop. And then the shoes themselves. So as you probably guessed, these are the Supreme Air Jordan 14s. I got them in the blue black colorway in my size, size nine. They retailed for $248, which is a weird retail price. Better than I expected. Huh. So here they are, the Supreme Air Jordan 14s in this black blue colorway. Um, a really interesting pair of sneakers, and the reason that people aren't a huge fan of them is because of the studding on the side. The idea is that Michael Jordan was wearing a jacket that looked just like these shoes, black, blue, with the studs on it, to like an unveiling of one of his statues. And I gotta be honest with you, I don't think anyone really cared. I don't know if it would be something that I would base a whole sneaker concept behind. I think it's a, a weird weird decision but hey not my decision it's like such an inconsequential moment in history like i'd never even thought about his jacket that he was wearing for that photo i didn't even realize that photo existed and uh whatever so the first thing you'll notice is of course the supreme jump man tag hanging off the side of the shoe it's a nice tag you know it'd be fun to put on a keychain or something like that if you don't want to keep it on your shoes, which hopefully you don't. The upper of the shoe comes in primarily black. I believe this black and blue colorway is exclusive to Supreme. I don't think it's dropping on the Nike sneakers app. I think that's just the white pair, which if it didn't have the studs, I would actually prefer the white pair, but for some reason with the studs, this black and blue pair looks a little bit better in my opinion. As for the studs themselves, I could definitely do without them. It's obviously the biggest talking point on the shoe. It's the thing that everyone's noticed and uh, made comments about and I mean, it's fine. Uh, this is not a shoe that I would probably wear on a regular basis. I don't know how you'd rock this every single day because it's so loud. I do have to say that the suede on the toe box is pretty nice and you've got a little blue jump man right there on the top of the toe. I mean, it's an Air Jordan 14 with studs and in a black and blue colorway. It's nothing too, too crazy. You do have the word Supreme written across the top of the tongue on both shoes. You also have the Supreme logo in between the jump man and the 23 on the heel of the shoe. So if you like the Red Supreme Box logo, that's actually, to my knowledge, other than the insole, the only place that there's a red box logo on the shoe. There is actually a black box logo underneath the Jumpman on the jewel on the midfoot of the shoe, right underneath the ankle collar. The bottom of the shoe comes in primarily black with a herringbone traction pattern. You've got some red accents with the 14 up at the ball of the foot, and then also the, uh, the Jumpman in the midfoot. And then of course you've got this sort of corrugated steel looking silver accent in the midfoot as well. If you don't like the black laces that come with the shoe, it also comes with a set of blue laces if you decide to switch them out. And the blue does actually match the blue of the midsole pretty well. And the blue of the midsole actually has this nice sort of candy coating on it, which I like a lot. I actually really like the shade of blue. I think it's a nice shade of blue. And if the shoe didn't have the studs on it, I would think it's an excellent collab. I just think the studs are a bit much, but at the end of the day, Supreme isn't known for being a minimal brand, so it makes sense. And surprisingly, or not surprisingly, depending on how you feel about this shoe, this shoe actually sat on Supreme's website for, I think, maybe an hour, which is longer than I expected, to be honest with you. I thought it was probably gonna sell out, but maybe not instantly. And that just sort of goes to show that this isn't the most popular Supreme Nike or Supreme Jordan collab that's ever dropped. The Supreme Fives it dropped two years ago, three years ago, sold out instantly within seconds, and these guys sat. Granted, the 14s aren't as popular of a model, and this is definitely a very interesting take on the Air Jordan 14s, but hey, if you liked them, they shouldn't have been too hard to grab. They are re-releasing again on the Nike Sneakers app, and resale right now isn't too crazy. I think it's like 40 or 50 bucks over retail. But that pretty much wraps up the video for today. Once again, don't forget to enter the giveaway that I'm doing with Richie Lee. All the links to do so are in the description below. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.